Hello and welcome to this level three video within my energetic system series. <laughs> my name is Allie with Amory Speaks and this series is a creation of mine in hopes to talk through these really dense subjects um, in a more 3D kind of way to hopefully explain better the metaphysical principles that are at play here uh, in a way that everybody can understand because uh, that's really the importance and the uh, value of the working is for each one to take it on in their own way. And uh, so this series is uh, means of discovering our systems better and uh, allowing them to show us their functions and their dysfunctions. And in that observation process, right, as the bosses witnessing the functions, we can help and assist in corrective measures, right, um, in the variety of ways that are necessary. So uh, that's my initial little uh, introduction here at the start. Like I said, this is level three. Um, if you're new here and you haven't been following along with the series, definitely check out the other levels um, if this kind of thing interests you because this is, you know, just a small little layer uh, within the inner systems, right? So. Just to catch up and just to reiterate where we're at here in, in the, for those of us who've been following suit, right? We are within the inner systems. Our self as a system is what we're diving into and looking at within uh, level three. The first half of level three was looking at the processes, breaking ourself as a whole down um, from you know just you into the parts of you, the mind, the body, and the spirit and understanding how that's not just a slogan or just some like feel good words, but there's a real truth there. There's a reality there. And in fact, there's entire worlds, layer of you and everyone else and in the entire playscape of this reality has a physical layer, has a mind, mental or uh, electrical layer and also has a spiritual uh, etheric cymatic layer. Um, so understanding those three, the processes that happen and are available within each of those three layers of systems. Um, and we, do we dove into those a bit in section one. Because what is the system other than what it's defined to do, right? Um, when we set aside a person, and they're their self and you're distinctly you, you know, your inner systems, the things that keep you running and going and that make up you, your opinions, your ideas, you know, all of those things that are you set you apart from others. They define your system. There's infinite working and discovery within the inner systems. Um, and, but that's just one part of the whole, right? And so section one was about diving into all of those tiny processes and um, introducing ourselves to them. You know, not really trying to get into the nitty gritties of it. This is a lifelong process, but an introduction uh, meeting at the table of sovereignty, right? To just get to hear each other out. And perhaps we're speaking completely different languages and it's gonna take a while to even learn the language, right? Um, you have to leave open space for that, but this is just an introduction working. Um, and so in section two now, we're going to swip, uh, swap the lens <laughs> from the internal processes of the system, what makes the system a system, and talk about the uh, overall presentation of the polarity. And this uh, happening, the, the collection and the charge really of what the energetic transactions are kind of doing uh, and how they're doing it is really about taking into account all of those processes that are happening. And once you can really assess and, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> 
once you can really assess and watch and uh, yes, observe the, um, the processes individually, then you can take into account the whole working. But that takes another um, type of consciousness. You have to step sort of out of the first person view the role of the banking manager of the corporation, right? And step out and be the uh, ultimate observer so that you can assess and see how the workings happen with others and how others view you. Um, and we will learn and talk and discover more and more about this when we again turn the lens and talk about external systems, external service, the Torito uh, flow around us that has to do with like all others and external exchanges and all that kind of stuff. Um, but like I have said throughout this um, series, we will start with the inner systems first and talk about those inner external changes um, and exchanges and transactions first so that we get a handle on them and understand um, the full weight and the, the gravity of each exchange and the value that's there um, so that we don't get too lost in it when, when we look at the big picture. And, and conversely, we don't get too pigeonholed into single processes and forget the big picture. Um, so section two of level three is really kind of a balancing act here <laughs> and to teach us metaphorically and um, literally the practice of balancing this concept of comparisons and creating um, definition between opposing points, right? You know, the, discovering the gray between the white and the black. And uh, so if you are new, then definitely check out those other um, videos because today what we're gonna focus in on is just the differences in flow, in um, each design <laughs> or model. The organic original design, which is positive flow, and then um, the inorganic inverted design, uh, which is the negative flow. Now, uh, Maybe I kind of want to backtrack and check my language. And, and this is an ever evolving thing, right? And I notice with myself too, it's difficult to not always um, tie in negative, positive with good and bad, and also with organic and inorganic, original and artificial. Um, because they are um, not always reflections of those things. You know, um, for example, here, when we're talking about the inner systems, it is a negatively oriented system in itself. And it functions in that way in, in the organic model. And so just because it's a negatively oriented system, um, <clears throat> you know, doing work of pulling in mostly, um, of processing, storing, um, filtering, you know, integrating. It doesn't mean that it is inverted artificial system. Um, when we talk about inverted and artificial systems with polarity alignment, that almost always is referring to the bigger picture and also with the external, the literally last external processes we're involved in, i.e. you with literal others out there in the direct world, you know, not layers and aspects within yourself. And so keep that in mind as we are really focused down in the inner systems within ourselves only. We're talking about inner external exchanges where we're seeing ourself as a version of the other, the great other or source, a source. <coughs> Excuse me. I have such a tickly throat this morning. Cold weather has just like come out of nowhere. It's almost like winter here um, overnight. And um, noticing definitely a dry throat. <clears> throat> um, 
don't want to be eating cough drops when I'm making <laughs> video either. So <laughs> I'm noticing it a lot. Ah, but yes. So when we're zoomed in here in the inner systems and we are, we're looking at negative alignment. Um, it's not artificial and it's not inorganic because it is seeing the self as the great other. And it is a balancing act between the negative alignment of your inner core and the positive alignment of the external torito. Uh, conversely, also the same tool, if you happen to be negatively aligned or if we're looking at the negative diagram, which we're gonna look at in a second, um, the two next to each other, um, the negative alignment has the same kind of balance coming, the opposing inner and outer systems However, um, there's never any time for balancing between the two. <coughs> I'm so sorry to keep popping. <coughs> um, <clears throat> hopefully that does it in. <laughs> the inorganic artificial um, model and usage, right? It has the same opposition, except that the exterior is the negative system and the interior one is the positive system, positively charged system and negatively charged system. There's still, you know, that um, kind of magnetic battery type of thing we see with the attraction and repulsion, creating sacred boundary, creating form and holding this weird barrier together. Um, However, because the tool is inverted and it is hiding from one truth and from its ultimate power of source, um, it can never actually use the tool <laughs> full, to full functionality. Um, it's upside down. And so you can never actually do or, or be able to use it positively for internal positive balancing and light shadow work because it's upside down. And you can never store really store energy. You never have, you'll never have the time, the extra uh, resources or, or extra time to do any of that kind of work because all direction and focus of every now present moment is gonna be on survival. It's gonna be on filling up the, the battery in the system to keep it going for external services because that seems like the most directly important thing in the first person view. And when you uh, think it's one life only and you're, energy source is limited and you only have what you've got or if you fill some more up and you know take from others to fill your thing up to keep going as long as you can until it expires and then you do and that's the end for you uh, when you have that truth quote unquote it's it's the old, the first lie really we'll get into that i'll share the screen um, to make this talk more valuable here let me just share my screen right away not get Too talky. <laughs> okay, so here we have it's it is kind of small. I hope when I look back at this, I don't think it's too small to read, but maybe I will just zoom in on each one in a minute. Um I will share these as PDFs as well, like on my telegram and on the community tab at YouTube. So you can take your time and read them. You could save them if you want. Um, <laughs> You know, feel free to make edits to them, changes, and send them back to me. I'll love that. If you see things that I perhaps missed or things that should be added or, or language you don't agree with. Anyways, so there's some major differences here, right? Again, let's first talk about and where I have left off at this immediate truth or lie. The choice is always there. Every present moment, as a sovereign conscious being, you have the choice to live in alignment with your truth and the one truth, which is um, there's a before and after, which we will go back to, and that there's a creator with a purpose behind it all. Um, that's really the truth. That's really the one truth, right? Um, about the who's and the what's and the why's and the specifics, you know, uh, the walk up to the door, there's a hundred doors into this building. Okay, but when we get in the building, the truth is there, 
right? So let's not argue about the view and the walk up and how you might have got there differently. We are free to get there however you choose. That's the beauty of exploration back to oneness. Your path is yours. You're one finite piece within the infinite seeking out itself to, to find all points within infinity. I mean, come on. Why argue with others? You cannot force another to have the same walk. You're you're denying your, your originality when you do that. Um, and again, see, you're, hurt, you're harming yourself. This is how it all comes back. And it all shows that like the, the one truth is one love <laughs> and that all is one and unconditional love runs the whole show. Um, so all of the, every energy transaction, every parameter and architectural structuring of functionality you know, um, from physical, physiological and anatomy structuring to the electrical nervous system functionings to the spiritual, untouchable, unexplainable functions, right? All of them is the, is the great scope of um, what we're trying to talk about and define. And so, um, you know, it's impossible. It's, but in, in the impossibility of it, we should find fun and humor and mystery and adventure, right? That's the point. Um, and when you tap into unconditional love and your sovereignty, you can get the point finally, you know, because there's nothing to worry about when you know you're going back home, <laughs> you know, when you know that you are, um, you have been bestowed with beautiful gift and that you are a reflection of God here created in the image of ultimate infinite intelligence. And that everything that's within the scope here is within the scope of boundary. It's been set by an observer outside of it. So, I mean, um, they, you can't really try to argue purpose and function. They kind of go together can't really have functionality without a purpose to be doing um but some try to and and plenty of us have this lie and for many different reasons we create a barrier and we lie to ourselves and we say no that's not true or it's one yolo or whatever um or you know only x y and z good people get to have an forever life and the rest of them are gonna be tortured and terrible and um I don't want to get too, and now I'm getting like uh, philosophical, uh, dogmatic conversations that, we should, you know, we want to pull out of and away from. <laughs> so directed back, the, the initial difference here and the initial uh, point that I'm making is, the, is aligning with your truth, that you're here on purpose for a purpose, basically. Now on the inner, um, system that has the organic design that aligns with the truth. And you'll see in the middle section, there's the star glowing. And on the other side in this, um, in the inorganic design, oh, did I forget to put inorganic at the top of that? I rushed through this um, infographic last night because I really want to make this video before homeschooling this morning. Um, and I forgot to write inorganic design up there. Um, oh, well, I'll fix it before I share it for real um, on community tab. On the other, on the other version, on, with the black hole in the center. Okay, <laughs> um, we'll have to just look at the pictures for differences here. Um, as you can see, the other one has a black hole in the center, and that is kind of like what I'm calling this like cistern, an artificial sort of container or black hole. Um, that is placed on top of or right on over um, the zero point, the star in the center of the, of the Taurus, right? Um, and yes, we are talking about just the inner core of the Toroidal, the three-part whole tool, right? We're kind of, we're talking about the hourglass inner vortex structuring. But within that whole system is a great reflection of the others as well. But, but for now, we're just talking about this inner core. And within that inner center of that Taurus is the zero point, is the birthing 
of the star or of the energy of the expanse and, and the implosion as well. This is the thing. It's, it's that, it's that point of flipping. It's that ever, we cannot explain what it is, but what it is, is portal tunnel, um, placeholder, your anchor <laughs> to spirit round to all other layers up and out, you know, to higher conscious and lower consciousness, all of it's available through that zero point. Um, you know, straight up through source and all the way down into cellular levels and uh, all places in between. But what happens when we lie to ourselves and when we deny ourselves that truth, that availability to have that beautiful complex structuring. When you say, no, I'm just like an evolved ape who lost his tail and all his hair and I don't have all of this. What are you talking about? I'm not a met metaphysical eternal being. You know, I have like sparked out of a lightning bolt climbed out of a swamp and come to be me it's one life you know i just happen to be a, this miracle of an egg and a sperm from my parents before me there's not too much more to it than that you know you're free to believe that uh you know but this is the original thought that's the intention that runs your whole systems external internal all of it and you're immediately shutting down the spirit layer and saying it's not there you're crippling half you know a, a third of your body <laughs> on purpose you know and you're wondering why your tool isn't you know working why your life isn't producing in the way you want it to why you're you're not um, glowing <laughs> inside right uh, you're not waking up every morning loving your life with adventure and a pursuit of happiness to just be alive and to have great service to offer you know instead you're dreading life or you're you're seeking some carrot on the stick to finally get your retirement and, and have five minutes of peace before you die uh you know it doesn't really i'd rather have my happiness my joy uh my top of mountain peaks time after time while i'm alive and enjoying them um but there's the difference between standing in truth, sovereignty and acceptance of the gift of life or shying away from it or denying it or deciding for whatever reason that it's not there and you don't want to take it on like that. You don't like that approach, which we are. This is third density. This is freedom of thought, right? Free choice, the, the law of chaos, free will. It's beautiful in itself. And we have these two options to choose from. So let's get into the, the functionality of the inner system here, because God knows, I don't even know how long I've been talking for. Zoom doesn't show me a clock, but I always get long winded when I'm on Zoom. So yeah, the functions of the systems, right? First and foremost, we have the truth. So the organic design, positive functionality, to have an overall collection of positive charge left over, right? So it, look, just flash to basics and back to ground zero here. Systems have energetic exchanges happening, right? That's all they're doing, handing off, giving and taking. When we talk about charge or positive and negative, we're talking about the overall balance left over. When energetic exchanges are happening, what do you have as a resonant charge left over? Is it positive in, in the red or is it negative in, I mean, in the black? Is it positive in the black or is it negative in, in the red, right? Um, do you see your quote unquote credit, your energetic supply as limitless? Do you have one of those uh, Visa black card or whatever that lets you into anywhere? Or, you know, do you see yourself with this sort of like debit card working week to week, having to like budget your check and making $10 an hour? Uh, this is a metaphor, but it's also very, very real. And when you start to tie these metaphors and anchor your life to them and see the parallel like that, and make actionary choices in your real life to align with things that you want after thinking them through in this kind of way, you know, the momentum and the directionality in your life really shifts. It really does. Um, but you have to hone in first and foremost on your truth because when we deny our truth and when we deny our, um, ourselves that beautiful gift of uniqueness and sovereignty, it's initial distortion and um, it causes a ripple effect and it basically signals out to all other systems, the external systems, especially that this limited, this limitless, no limited, excuse me. Yes. Very limited, restricted um, 
resonance. And so all energy exchanges, all processes and functions happening have start off with a limited mindset. And they really have set accountants. They have all of these people watching the books, holding the exchanges, very um, negatively oriented, micromanaging happening. And um, when we set that directionality to begin with, you're going to have a negative overall charge, no matter what kind of internal positive systems are doing positive functionality. The overall leftover charge will have a negative vibe to it. It will have a negative balance because you'll always need more. There will never be enough. Um, and anybody who kind of questions that or doesn't understand why or what that's about, you know, um, we have the 3D display of that really well out there with things like addiction and obesity and, and stuff. Um, if you need to look to those, the white coats for their sort of terminology and definitions and their experience to, to showcase evidence, it's, it's all there anyways, but it's all in the heart. We know these things are not good for us. We know they create these liar loopings that have uh, self-harm at the center of them. Um, so if you're caught up in those and you're trying to get out of them, it's not difficult, it's very simple. And it all is about going back to the heart center, connecting with your truth and owning your right to be alive, owning your right to make mistakes, owning your right to hit rock bottoms, make bad choices. It's free choice here, that's what it's about. But don't stagnate and, and go over all of the negativity in there. Look for the pieces of wisdom you learned through there. Look for the lessons. Look for the, I won't do that that way again, kind of thing, you know? Or, um, you know, sometimes it's forgiveness and sometimes it's self-love that we need, a hug and, and support. We need time to cry it out. We need time to just lay there and mourn. Maybe that's what is going on right now. But if you're listening and sensing, you'll see what you need and you have to offer that those negative aspects of yourself, those things first. So they feel empowered to make the change, to do the flip. And the flip, like I just started this whole talk about, is instantaneous. We make that choice at every moment to align with our truth or deny it in so many ways. But all to bring it back to generalities and to bring it back to that great truth, it makes it very simple. And it all, every decision, every choice point, its root comes back to that initial great truth. So when you can remember and follow the route back, it makes making those dis discernment points easier because you can feel true north. And, and it's like when you have a compass and, and you're at opposing, opposing points, if you know where you're going, you look to the compass and the compass will show you which road to, te to take. We have that inside of us. Um, within the heart center but we have to activate it. we have to live in our heart and again to bring it to the diagrams and to really get going here on the organic side we have the green heart upright large you know um it reflects beautiful light in there it really runs the show it has a great connection to the higher chakras and it has a strong connection to the lower your heart really is these sits on the zero point it is really the center of your energetic being in so many ways um and when we live in it and we honor it um that keeps our system and keeps holds our alignment right in in a positive alignment it holds this beautiful um negative system here drawing in within you and when, um, and conversely here, we'll just go to the diagram and look at the opposite side. I have the heart shrunken, smaller, inverted, upside down on its head, a mockery or a lie of it, um, and a cage around it. And this really showcases the, the lie and, and what really we're doing to ourselves when we create this black hole and when we deny that zero point, that, that um, beautiful star within us that we are. Um, and if you'll notice, I have this kind of like arrows around the um, black hole area, and it really has to skip, and it really skips over the heart center completely. It doesn't interact with it. It kind of turns a blind eye to it, like um, in a, a prisoner who's, you know, uh, getting out, and he's walking past all the other prisoners stuck in a cage still, and he's like, Doo -doo 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 -doo. don't look, it's all about me. You know, this is what the energy happens. We skip right over the heart center and get through speech. And 
the, of course, your truth center becomes malaligned. Um, and a lot of times it's shrunken and distorted um, because what happens, I've shown with the flame here, we'll get into the flame. The flame is giant and expansive um, in the inverted version in the positive flow here because we need extra energies. We need empowerment to skip over the heart and to say, oh no, that's not important. It's this is survival is important. You're the most important. Don't look over there, right? That's the thing you tell yourself as the, the, the um, prisoner skipping out, right? You self-empower your survival. You're more important than others. This is the negative alignment. This is negative service of the self, helping yourself at the expense of others. Now, it could just be one boss doing that to the two other bosses within yourself. Maybe your mind boss walks by your body's boss and, and your spirit caged up. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's the body and the mind and they just walk by the spirit a lot. That's a big one. Um, but uh, it can happen in all different ways, right? But to just understand that this is the functionality, this is the metaphysical um, physiological way that these the system works, the Taurus tool works. And when it's upside down and inverted, the tool still works, but it needs extra energy to work. You know what I mean? Um, because as you see the battery, we can get into the battery now in the, this, um, uh, in organic model and the positive push, the batteries in the positive upright use useful <laughs> in use mode, you know, um, <coughs> You believe you're limited. You believe your one life is just this life and you've been given this battery source. Who knows how long it will last for. You'll die whenever you will. It's one life only and you've been given this sort of little thing. You better watch the meter on it and, and add it into it when you need more. And, and um, it's very literal. Um, and again, due to the lie that it's only one time here. And it makes sense, you know what I mean? It makes perfect sense when you tell yourself that, well, you would need a battery like that. You would need extra energy. You really, the tool would need to be used in that way. Um, and the expansive solar energies, the flame, the ego, you know, being very inflamed and uh, very masculinely aligned, you know, ready for action, pushing, um, skipping over the heart center and pushing service out inside of you. Um, doesn't sound very friendly to have that kind of aggressive attitude towards yourself inside of yourself, right? Um, but that is the, the feeling and the flow of the external services within yourself. And we talk about external services within the self, right? We're talking about how your body uh, fuels itself, right? How your inner, your anatomy works, how your organs function, the, how you, um, how you use your energy in, um, to do things, you know, how you rest and recharge. Um, all of those things really are what we're talking about with this service, external service within the self. And um, when you have very actionary pushing overall atmosphere within the self, get it done, get it done. What needs to be done? Let's get it done. Um, what do you need? You know, like very kind of um, overactive and overly inflamed energies going out there. Um, it causes that ripple effect through all of the other workers and managers throughout the body. So all of your body systems within your body are going to feel that type of energy. They're going to have aggressive bosses, you know, who are going to want um, results, going to want productivity, going to want to know exactly what has to happen right now. And if you need something, tell me, it's gotta be very directive. It's gotta be very obvious and um, masculinely oriented, right? And um, the other thing that we'll tie this into the battery again is that we're using our battery for functioning. So not only have we have this over empowerment of the ego center giving us this extra sort of energy aggravated energies but we're also literally using the battery itself to fuel working inside the body to fuel energetic processes thought processes spirit flow to to do all of the actual um, cellular processes we're using our bat battery for those things whenever we need to 
Um, and conversely, we'll just, before I get into external things, I wanna just look at the other side here. In the organic model, the battery is in the down position. It's in the charging position. It is not active. It's not used for much. There are some deep resources, some core uh, work that is used for this deep battery, um, which we can, we'll talk about um, when we really get into inner systems maybe later, but this is, you know, introductional stuff. And just to understand, this is the charging position. It's not really used. It's not needed because what's happening in the organic positive alignment, when you align with your truth and when you have this beautiful glowing star inside of you um, and see the eternal flame within the positive model is not overly enlarged. It's the same size as the heart. It recognizes and in the center channel, it has great clear communication through the center channel for all energies to pass with clarity and with unconditional love. And so the flame lights the heart center up beautifully. And um, if you have never seen my tower, heard me talk about the energetic tower metaphor or done my tower meditations for the energy centers, um, it's, a, it's a metaphor and the tower is you and every energy center is a floor in the tower. And when we create the architecture of the floor and we build the, the rooms and, and the furniture and the vibe of every floor as we go up ourselves and as we go through the centers, uh, we create a center channel like a lift elevator, a golden tube or crystalline um, whole center that you can like a stairway or whatever you want to create for yourself. It can be open, it can be whatever. Uh, but anyways, this open center channel, <laughs> it creates beautiful flow of energy, communication, um, through all the centers. And so the flame will, comes through, it lights up the heart in, in a beautiful way. And the heart is lit and speaks and is open with the truth center above it. And um, when all of these work in alignment with each other and they balance each other, they create their own sort of um, boundaries of energy and they create their own energy within themselves. They are literally wheels of energy spinning <laughs> within you with a different flavor and uh, like a light, and it has its own power. It has its own resonance out. And when they're all singing, they fuel you and you have a purpose and you know it and you wanna share it with others and it flows out of you effortlessly. Um, and it lights you up because every day you'll wake up with, oh, I gotta do this, oh, I wanna do this. I have this idea, I have this desire. I'm gonna paint this, I'm gonna sing this. I'm going to help this person. I'm gonna seek this answer. I'm going to seek this thing for myself. Um, I'm going to be there for this person. You know, everybody's um, drives, purposes are different. But when those are clear, you'll hear them so, so beautifully. And it, it really fuels everything. You don't ever have to tap into that battery. <laughs> and if you find yourself you know, with some um, stagnation or some dissonance happening, we learn light and shadow work and we learn about living in our cycles and riding the tides and the ebb and the flow and when charging is necessary and, and when we need, when we flow with our light and our power. And um, those corrections really help the tool to maintain its beautiful balance. And what are we here to do but balance, right? Um, and so in the down facing charging position, when we're drawing in, in this beautifully aligned inner negative system, instead of pushing out service, and that's the main directive of the system is actionary pushing service. The main directive of the system is negatively drawing in, calling into it, pulling into it nutrients, um, information that it needs, you know, uh, light energy that it needs. And when the, when the directionality of the system is about pulling in, um, and what's happening is it's coming in through the higher centers first, coming through the heart, passing through the zero point. And in the positive alignment, when the heart center is lit and the throat is lit in a in, in positive way, right? We get better information processed through, right? We're interpreting information. We have to remember through exchange, 
interpretation, personal interpretation happens. And that's unique to you. What you in, absorb and take with you and what passes by you is to you unique, right? Just like you know when you're learning something, when you're reading or listening or watching a movie, you get a takeaway different than the other person sitting right next to you, another person who read that, another person who watched that movie. Different keywords stick out. You don't remember certain facts that they do. All different things come into play. All different things come into play on every level of every exchange. Don't deny yourself that beautiful conscious awareness to understand the infinite capacity that is you. Don't deny that to yourself. Live in that expansive opportunity all the time. It's, it's an adventure. It's wonderful. And when we allow that and we see it for what it is, um, it continues to charge us and fuel us. <laughs> you know what I mean? It does, it's not depleting in that way when we're interpreting it that way. And it's all about intention. That's what runs these systems. So when we're intending to draw in and we're intending and we know um, it's passing through our heart and our highest good and source filter uh, and that when it's passing through, it knows where it's going to go. It hits the inner systems and it's told where to go. And those instructions in the atmosphere of the inner system, when it's aligned positively and we have good balance, right? It's pleasant. It's unconditionally um, open and loving and free flowing. And so it hits the inner systems and it's told with love and grace where to go. And it desires to be of service. So it goes there just like oxygen molecule comes in ready to do what work do you need from me? And it's told you need it in the blood cell here and it rides down and it's, you know, the blood cell is carrying the oxygen molecule happily because that's what it loves to do. It loves to give the ride. It's on the ride to drop and pick up in a flow. It loves it. And the oxygen loves where it goes and it does its work as it's handed off to the organ. The organ, whoever takes in the oxygen, hands off the CO2 and, the, and that cell takes it away and it rides it out and it gives it back off to the lungs. And when it gives it off, it gives it off with love. Here you go take that away we don't need it anymore thank you thank you right when we have this mantra of thank you when we have this unconditional love within our systems for all workers when the workers know the bosses appreciate them with the whole system is in mind here we're all running for each other's benefit we're all a part of the same universe which is you the whole here in the inner system right? Every other that we are working with and every self we are working with is a reflection of God. And um, when we hold that atmosphere within the systems, it radiates down through all levels. Just like when you lie to yourself and there's dissonance and you're rushing and there's um, limited resources, limited time, everything needs to be hurrying and uh, monitored and, and uh, on the books and all of that, you know, that resonance and that atmosphere travels down through all the layers and all the workers have that kind of uh, need and purpose and um, frequency about their work. And when you think of it in that way, it's like, well, what kind of, what I want my workers to feel like, what do I want to work in? And what kind of conditions do I want to work in? Um, and that really allows deeper work. And that's what I was talking about, about getting into with bosses and those great meditations. So like I said before, if you haven't seen those, definitely um, those are worth watching. So let's talk about overall flow just for a minute. This is a bit external for the internal systems, right? But it's so important that we grasp external polarity that we grasp the overall processing the balancing act that's happening right um the overall observation of both types of transactions being able to see it as the whole and to assess what's happening overall um and if you look i mean it's quite obvious with the arrows going around for the for the positive service around and in. And for the uh, negative service, we have the pushing out the bottom around and drawing in. Now, let's listen to what's happening and then we'll add the parameters of the scope of the world that's happening in 
transfer so we can get the gravity of, of the motion, right? But the motion and the function that happens, okay, is that drawing in and bringing in of nutrients, right, can be uh, and is on all layers and levels, right? It's drawing in of the nutrients that you literally need as in eating and uh, food and, and molecules and water um, and, and, and those processes that create like, you know, the vitamins and minerals, all of these things that have to do with hormones and glands and all of that kind of stuff. Um, there's the drawing in of that. There's also drawing in of uh, energy, like frequencies, uh, thoughts and emotions and um, wisdom and knowledge and information, right? Directions. And um, so whatever different flavor of drawing in becomes apparent when we get into the layer of consciousness and the world that we're talking about. Um, but all those different types can be available and are available to the system of drawing in. And when we draw in, there's either a pulling in through the roots, through the base level and a soaking up, which is um, we see displayed through the organic world beautifully, right? Through all of our plant life, um, the taking in through the roots um, of nutrients and water and everything. And um, it's important to look to organic functions to see the truth of the structures and then look inwards for those structures. Um, and so there's a lot of benefits and there's a lot of um, straightforwardness that comes when we pull in through the roots. Anytime we're pulling in through the, through the root center and through the bottom, um, that whatever flavor of nutrients information is coming into us from the external will be immediately drawn into that physical level, immediately drawn into that most um, needy resources that the, that the whole over, overall alignment says is the most needy processes. So it could be, they could be drawn in and directed right into whatever kind of organ system needs, whatever it is. Um, it can be drawn into and immediately put in the battery if it's energy, you know? Um, but the, the intention is that as it's drawn in, it will have immediate usage, you know, because it's been ne it's needed. Um, if it seems quite obvious, it seems like straight about language, but when we start to look at um, the different layers, right, and the different bodies and systems that use it, it's so important to remember what's, what's really happening um, with the negative drawing in. Because when we take it in through the roots, it has immediate usage. Um, when we draw it in through the thoughts first and then through the heart center, then it has the, uh, a moment of contemplation. You know, it reflects through the being and through the body and there is uh, discernment involved. And so if there's not this sort of carnal, instinctual, automatic trick of the mind that happens. And it, it, it's not a unconscious system of drawing in when we draw it in through the, the higher energy centers first. Um, and that's important because when we talk about overall balance collection and how the negative internal core is balancing with the external positive to create an overall positive charge for you yourself as the whole being, right? It's really important that we understand this negative drawing in through the top is um, because it's in the setting of positive alignment and you're aligning with your truth, all of those inner systems, all of the drawing in will align with the truth and it will know where to go and it will have its service offered freely as it enters in through the heart. Um, conversely, where it's drawn in, its service isn't really offered freely, its service is required. And as it's pulled in, it's felt the requirement and it's drawn into where it has to go. Um, the intention is very different. And this is how 
and why we can't always say negatively oriented systems are bad, are service to self negative bad, collecting negative overall charge. This is why they can and they do balance and work beautiful balancing and offer great service to overall positive charge. Um, In, but, but when we see other negative systems in dissonance and the actual inversion of negative systems, it's, you'll see the clear difference and you'll understand. And when we talk about, right, here in the um, inorganic design, the drawing in through the roots here, and we place these inside the body, right? And you think about, okay, the inner workings of my body, do I want to be in this sort of soaking in needy, um, pulling in everything that I can from the external universe. Remember the external universe in this metaphor is just you, has nothing to do with the outside world, <laughs> it's just you. So you're going to be pulling in everything you can, everything that seems like extra bits not needed right now from internal you, you're gonna be pulling those in and, and putting them places to do work um, immediately. And, and you're really exhausting those little extra resources out in the rest of the universe of you. Uh, while you're doing that, drawing in there of the roots in this inside of you. And you're also pushing off service out. Everything's got to go this way. You have to go do this now. This oxygen's needed here. You better go do it um, in a really pushy way. And it, it, you can hear how maybe you don't want to treat yourself that way. How instead, if we look in the organic alignment, what happens is, yes, it's it requires extra oomph because we're pushing service out through the root, through the base levels here. Um, it is the opposite way of, of the system, really. Um, but we're pushing through the roots service. And so when we push out through the root, um, yeah, there's extra energy needed. But what happens is that the service gets directed towards what's actually needed. So it passes through those base level instinctual needs. And it's already been harnessed and concept, you know, point of conception is the zero point. It's aligned with sovereignty, lives in unconditional love and its truth and lives in its right to be and its right to be connected to source, right? And so when it gets this extra oomph and push from the eternal flame to push out through the roots, it's picking up the information that the roots have, um, those base level needs, those urgent resourced needs, right? It picks up those information points through the roots as it pushes through and it carries it out with it through the body. So those actionary points know where they need to go and they have the fuel sort of like the current, it rides the wave out to wherever in the body needs service done at. And then it provides the service. And then there's this current, the flow, the wave of pulling in happening. And that's where the current, the energy is no longer needed, right? There's no more directional masculine energy needed to push out because the natural flow up through the top carries back all of that service, all of the retribution, all of the dis, um, maybe the toxins and the, the unneeded debris pieces and things that are coming and riding back in that need to find their way out through the zero point, out through the layers, out into the external world. Because when we hit the zero point, this is the point of passing through. It passes out to every other layer including the external ether world. So all things that need to come out of you, CO2, whatever, everything, it has to come through this. It, it works much better. It works in alignment with your higher self when it has been collected out by the magnetic pull, comes through the higher centers, knows exactly, oh, I need to be released. I'm CO2. Oh, I need to be released. I'm a stagnant, upset energy that was trapped down here. It rides through the heart, nose, and is released out. This one's released out through the lungs, physically in 3D molecules. This one's released out cymatically through the spirit level, is let go through that way, you know? Um, but when we have that natural organic drawing in and it passes through those higher centers, through the, the throat and the heart, through the zero point, and is released where it needs to go, is passed on to other or source or the ether. Um, you can see how, how that works, how that filter really works. It works for you, for your highest good. And it works on its own. There's a current that happens. They catch each other. They ride on each other. And the truth is the motion of the zero point. You never, as long as you always realign with your truth, you'll get that oomph to keep this thing going. 
And if you're ever faltering or feeling like it's not, you're drawing in and your thing's getting messed up in there and you're needing things from inside of you, you have light and shadow work to do, you know? Go find out where that um, covering is happening on your truth and take it off. No matter how deep that pit is in there, climb down in there and find, you know, that shadow that lost itself and do the work with it to help it rise out of there. Um, so yes, uh, the negatively aligned system works beautifully inside of us to fuel the inner core workings and to fuel all of this layer that is the inside of you. Um, one other thing I didn't really say, but I will say is when we have this natural flow and the negative system, the, the battery is in the negative or charging kind of alignment. Um, like I said, the current keeps everything flowing. And so your battery can actually charge, you know, and never really be used unless for certain circumstances where we need to use it. Um, <coughs> so finally, I'm just going to stop the screen share. Like I said, I will um, put those up on my channel for anybody who really wants to be able to get in the text and read and go over it for themselves. Um, but just for a point of direction of where we're going, I found this. Um, <laughs> somewhere, I don't know, on the internet, but I've been looking for like this organizational model, right, to talk about the inner system. And as you can see here, um, and like I've talked about with the banking model, kind of, you know, this is, I'm going to use this as a map and uh, go and edit it in my uh, open office and change, you know, the names in here and stuff. But <clears throat> to showcase the points of view and the different bodies, uh, mind, body, and spirit, but also in, in a different language, the external services and those kind of things that um, are offered with our external services, you know, like uh, how you interact with others, your relationships, your partner, uh, your children, your community, all of those that kind of um, external things and, and use more of a corporate tech uh, terminology like marketing and you know like account financing manufacturing all of these kind of um more industrial corporate 3d terms and have them running parallel to the actual work that happens within us so that we can really display the metaphor um and have a map like this so that when you go to do inner working with the bosses you have a reference point of a map so that it can guide you to learning the languages and to learning these different processes so that on your own time you can one day find your way to the human resources building and have a conversation with the person who does the human resources relations for your external workings and, you know, see who you're seeking to employ your service, see how you're seeking out to offer service and, um, and witness those functions. And also to be able to get down into say accounting and get down into the finance manager and see how am I spending my, my currency, my time, my value, my intentions and, um, and manufacturing, get down in there. If you've got some disease within the body, you know, and see, um, what's going on and, and just to have these sort of more uh, parallel points that tag into the real world. Because when we have these uh, real world models and we can work in ourselves, sort of do the exercises at home internally first and learn um, the movements and build some muscle. When we go out into the real external world and we go to the gym, you know, we'll be able to get on the machines and really use them to the full benefit. Um, because that's what they're intended to do, you know, um, build muscle for those who know how to use it correctly. And the machine's not there to just plunk around with and figure out how to use any which way, you know, it was designed for a certain usage. And when you know how to use it and the functions that are available for, for that model and, and the different exercises, and you have the muscle to really even do them, right, then you can actually use the machine to what it's supposed to be used for. So that's kind of my intention with this map that I'm going to build and do my next, hopefully the next video on. We'll see um, how the end of the week goes. It might be next week before I get this out. I'm not positive. Um, but that's kind of what will be next up. will be like a walkthrough through this. Uh, feel free. I'll share this as well. 
um, to take it and run with it because maybe you don't even need a walkthrough from me. Many of us don't. I tend to over explain things anyway. So if you know, you've got the picture of it and you already see bam, bam, bam. Oh, this is me. This is this point of me. This is that point of my personality, this archetype, this situation, take the model and run with it on your own and, and use it as a guide point to create more distinct language within yourself to really create visually a model of a corporate building or whatever kind of business building you want to model yourself as. I like to use the corporate model um, as sort of a joke and a pun <laughs> on the negative alignment and on the inversion of turning all things on their head. They love to mock uh, positivity and, and mock the organic by um, inverting it. And so I think, well, it's kind of like, well, joke's on you because now I'm inverting your inversion <laughs> you know, to the organic model. I am looking in the, the picture to see the truth and then putting it back on its head the right way. Um, so joke's on you. But other people don't might not like that. They might be triggered by it or overwhelmed by it. And if that's the case, then maybe you skip that video and get into the meditations in a different way because I definitely have a bunch of different visualization kind of concepts other than that uh, kind of hijacked corporate model. But I guess I'm going to leave this video here for now. Thank you so much for listening and walking through uh, the infographics with me. Love to hear replies or responses. You can leave comments, send me emails directly. My email is always in the description. Um, if you're looking for more in the meantime, I know I've been sporadic with my videos, uh, busy in everyday life and homeschool with, with my kids and stuff. So um, if you are looking for more in the meantime, you can always find uh, amariespeaks.com, plethora of information over there, links to my podcast, older videos on BitChute and YouTube, um, as well as a bunch of different things that I've written, like articles and blogs and books and such, uh, you can find on my website. So thank you again so much for taking the time to listen uh, here. I appreciate your audience and I will talk to you soon.